Hi guys, so today I'm with Nabide and uh, thank you so much for watching and today we're going to be having fun talking, gisting and then she's going to be sharing her experience with me how she started, what her challenges are she's also a makeup artist but I know you do some makeup artist so I don't need she needs no introduction so her name is Nabide Tintantai she's going to properly introduce herself but I just wanted to have that honor of doing that and to be measuring her name so um, let's get into it so are we meeting? Okay, my name is Nabide Ujo and I'm the head makeup artist of the makeup professionals. Um, a makeup outfit based in Lagos, and I've been in business for 13 years now. 13 years since 2020, and um, I studied mechanical engineering in school. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm married with kids. Yeah. So, um, another question I'd like to ask you is: um, So you've been doing this business for a while now. Yes. What are the challenges? When people start makeup, what are the challenges? You always like they always keep up with your mistakes and you always see that makeup artists always make or it's not even makeup artists feature in the videos. Like for me, for example, I noticed that once they finish training, most of them just jump into owning a studio, which is very capital intensive, sometimes it's very strenuous on their budget and then their yeah, finances and then you know, because they don't have any customer yet to back up the kind of funds they, they have invested. So Sometimes they get frustrated and if you say, okay, you know what, this makeup thing is not for me and they leave. You know, so that's just one thing that I've noticed. So what are the things that you have noticed about, you know, like a major mistake that they always make? Yeah, people, I, I think I've noticed that people expect um, renovation early. Mm -hmm. They don't put in the work. They don't, um, they don't get experience. They don't serve. You know, there's one thing about um, learning hand work. If I'm being informal now, it's something about learning. When you learn, it's always good to serve. So at least where you where you learn, you can serve them to develop your skills, to develop some business skills that you cannot develop on your own. So that's one common mistake that I've noticed. The moment most um, startups, most um, make up yeah, they just right. start. Mm -hmm. it's, either, it's either they want to start their own products, they want to start selling, <laughs> they want to go to China, they want to import. Or they, want to, exactly, <laughs> or they want to go to um, go and open a makeup studio and that's very capital intensive when the customers do start coming yeah. they beat down their prices they get frustrated at the end of the day and they go to film it that's one thing i noticed so service can also be internship right yes so if you're not uh if you're done, and i think that's one of the ways i actually feel you know i know i remember way, way back when mark came and you if it wasn't that fantastic, I would not be working in school. Even if they're not paying me one dollar, I would not be working in school. And then I work with them. I'm telling you, so, and that relationship, I've built that relationship a number of times. And that's giving us so much. It has helped me. So, I think service is very important. Internship is very important. Even your beauty icon, go model. Uh, <laughs> you're not to be Nigeria, Africa, you can be all over the world. Like, who is that person like, ah. Uh, I really like yeah, their work. Yeah. It made the my beauty icon I would say is um Michelle Palmer. I don't know what she looks like physically but um she's someone that I admire her work a lot and I really like what she does and you know she just does great work. Then someone else I like to dress your face so my gosh. Uh, I really <laughs> love dress your Grandma. face. Yes. I like the fact that you know um, she's a beauty educator because that's, that's um, an aspect of the business that I focus on to teach. Yeah. So I like the fact that she's a beauty educator. There's always something to learn from her. And I also like her family life. And the fact that you know she she has a daughter like I do as well. And you know, we gave birth like um, a few weeks apart. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So, it's like a tweet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, okay. so let's move on. So now let's talk about staff. Staffing, that's a major challenge. Uh, it is. Makeup artist space. It is. So, um, can you share with us how you manage? If not totally overcome, like how do you manage that situation? Um, well, the thing is, I I'd rather not get people from outside. I, I prefer to get from people that have trained. Oh. You know, when you have been with people for a certain period yeah, of time, yeah. you can tell their character yeah. and some pretend over. You know, you can only pretend for so long. Yeah. So. Um, when I'm training a particular set, I observe them. The ones that are always willing to show up, 
that are coming from days that you don't have training. They're always like, Auntie, please, when you are going to work, please let me, you know, and it also depends on how time conscious they are. So that for me, it goes a long way in choosing your staff, you know. At the end of the day, when when they are done with their internship and you intend to take them on as full time staff, it makes it easy for you because you already forged some of, of yourself into them. So you can you don't start training from the scratch. Outside and yes. If you know they already know your pattern of work and to an extent you'll be able to deliver the same level of quality. So that's how I've been able to manage that and so we still have our challenges but you know. That's one thing I always mean, I always say to so that go, so that come back, we still mean I'll be my work. If you come, I'll not be contractor. I'm sorry I'm going pitching. No, no, no. I mean uh, yeah. I don't be contractor, I always say I don't be contractor, no be come, come, come and do makeup, come and do daily. Make a collect commission. No, I know my work, so nobody can take me for a ride. Yeah. If you say today uh, I'm no longer interested in working, I'm going bye bye, all the best, may God be with you. True. And I think that's one of the things um, that has affected us at Makeup Academy. A lot of times when we get too comfortable, we feel like oh, we have arrived, we forget to update ourselves, we brush up our skills, we just feel like go to make up and you know. And some, some people are still stuck in 10 years ago. No, <laughs> it's a lie, it cannot work. Because this era, well, no, I don't think so. Maybe in this decade things will change, but there are people that are still that's like, like they don't want, they don't want to change. But that's human nature. I so don't think it will welcome change. If you do not evolve, you will die. Because that's that's how it is. Let's be like, if you have access to just two for the rest of your life, just to make up items for the rest of your life, or if you have um a um, um, what was called now um, a way of imbibing two makeup culture to like just to what we do. If you see my glue on my ready. <laughs> like glow. Yes. You have to glow. Yes. yes. <laughs> Because the matter is, I can't do it without eyebrows because I have small brown hair. <laughs> so I know they always choose between eyeliner, yeah. um, eyeliner, 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 eyebrows, lipstick, and maybe the glow. Yeah. So I'll choose the lipstick and the glow. I can do it without the eyeliner. I can do it without because I wear glasses anyway, so you may not even notice. Uh, so I can do it without the eyeliner. I can do it without the eyebrows. The glasses sometimes won't provide. So, <laughs> so my lipstick was popping out. <laughs> so I think for me, eyeliner first because I, I'm black and then my eyes need to pop. You know, that, that's that's kind of like taking from I'm sleepy to yes, what's up? I'm mm -hmm. So eyeliner for me, I think I like colored eyeliner as well. Um, then um, not the glow testing, you know, like like first day. So you see that little thing, like you said, ah, well, even if it's too I have to. I, I I got to know about Ruby. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, no, ah, like, ah. That was like three years. Mini bashi number seven. Oh, please don't let go there. So I think I'm I'm prepared. In fact, I've changed already to use my yes. team. I used to I had to do the move first from here. Ah, well, and this is um like nine years ago. Ah, I'm getting old. You know what? Well, this is the best. This is the best. We did not do this then. Can you find this? Mom, 
Tive a dotar, ora eu. Eu ai. Eu ai. Eu sou, sou, tiro, a lot to her that you think. So you don't think that, okay, that's why if you have another opportunity to run another business while you're running your makeup business, please go ahead. It's not cast the stone that, oh, because you are feeling the role of the makeup artist. Other opportunities can come up for you and then you can also, you know, if you feel that you can do it, why not? Or if you can't, you know, just because of where your strength lies. But I'm not trying to say that she is a very industrious and smart ass person. <laughs> so thank you thank so much you. for that. I hope this inspires somebody you know you're out there and I'm thinking okay this uh, I want to add this to my thing I was out to yeah why not just this is very too many cars right now so you can also do that if you want to thank you so much guys for watching um see you in the next video bye don't forget to subscribe that's another very subscribe <laughs> Down below, how did they do that? I don't know. So click on <laughs> that subscribe button will be popping on this side. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Thank you for watching and bye.